Hi and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptid's Roost. Please be so kind as to throat punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to tap the notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. Oh and don't forget to share the video far and wide. This will all help with YouTube's algorithm and will help promote the channel more. And if you're going to leave a dislike, please be so kind as to comment why. That way I can review what you didn't like about the video and I can possibly make changes in future videos. Thank you. If you enjoy listening to the following story, be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile and drop them a line or even give them a glowing review. I'm sure they would appreciate it. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description. So grab your coffee, sit back and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. Some advice from a veteran monster hunter, part 3. This fantastic story is written by Greg Hart, a wonderful author over on Reddit's No Sleep subreddit. Hey Redditors, it's Ian. Sorry for the late upload. Spirits have been noisy lately, although I'm sure you already know about my talents if my dad still mentions me as often as he does. It's been a while since I've been to the US to visit him. The Fae up here in Ireland keeps me pretty plenty busy. That's right, Fae, not fairies. Whoever decided to liken the nasties to flittering girls in short dresses really had one dreadful sense of humour. I've got the bite marks to prove it. I figure you've all got some sort of knowledge about the subject, but allow me to paint yet a full picture. Let's start with where they come from, because they sure as hell, pardon my French, aren't from Neverland, or anywhere on this plane for that matter. If you've ever been to Ireland, then you've probably heard of the fairy forts. Well, I have news for you. They ain't forts their portals, or rather interdimensional rips, and every so often something nasty pops out to steal an infant. That's right, they have their own dimension that seem to take great pleasure in wrecking havoc in ours. I've never been, but that's only because I value pretty much everything about myself and would like it to stay intact. I also wouldn't be writing to you now if I'd visited the Fae in their world. You see Alice in Wonderland? Imagine that on acid and with more teeth, or so I've been told. Anyway, these things are twisted. They are only loyal to themselves and their court. Seely or unseely, it doesn't matter which a phase pledged to, it likely has plans to eat you. Speaking of eating, just yesterday I was called by a woman to investigate her ex-husband's death. Apparently he was a farmer from Tillage who was found dead after supposedly being mauled by dogs. Funny thing is, the night before his corpse was found, all the dogs in the neighbourhood howled in unison for hours. If that doesn't scream bag west, I don't know what does. Through my years in Ireland, seven to be exact, I've seen a lot. And even though I've seen the aftermath of men abducted by the Fae, I still want to make proper contact to sit down and have a conversation with one of their courts and make it out alive. Dad tried to get me to go hunting with him, never really took. I've always been a fellow for, for diplomacy. My sister is far different, but I don't want to get into her right now. Give me a good book, a grieving family and a spirit to set free over camping in the woods, rolling in urine and tracking a faecal matter all day. What my dad does is admirable but you have a different tool for every day. He's an axe. My sister is a sledgehammer. I'm a staple. While they're off smashing things, I'm holding families together and binding souls to their resting places. Now don't get me wrong, I kill monsters just like the rest of my family. But I try to hunt monsters, not misunderstood creatures and lost souls. If you all have some questions about souls, spirits and the like, drop them in the comments, but I've been sent here to write about monsters and I'm sure that's what you want to hear about. So let's talk about my scariest experience in Ireland. Ireland is an ancient and powerful place. 
Like Native American forest spirits, the entities tied to this place are as old as the land itself, which means they don't take very kindly to visitors, especially visitors born in a land deeply entrenched by another spiritual energy. For the first three years after my arrival in Ireland, spirits were attracted to me. Now I had no problem with this, I see spirits, I talk to them, and I help them achieve peace and forgiveness for the way they died, or for what force ended their brief walk on the mortal plane. But other things in Ireland are attracted to lost souls, things that are far older and far more dangerous than anything my father has ever faced. The Sloth Most law you read nowadays will explain that the Sloth are the lost souls of sinners, banished to wander the world in anguish forever. However, this only was written after the Christian faith became prevalent in Ireland. The truth is, the sloth are fey, too extreme for both courts. Now when a group of fey is too extreme for the seely and unseely court, that's when you have to be aware that there are nothing to be underestimated. The sloth are able, like most spirits and magical creatures, to change their shape. Most often they appear as a cloud of ravens or a dark storm cloud overhead. They are always present in Ireland and they seek lost souls to devour. Someone who goes through life not believing in an afterlife or spirits in general are easy prey for the sloth. They are anguished to realise that they were wrong about their soul and it's like a firecracker shot up in the air spelling DINNER in neon sparklers. The sloth can also kill humans still present on this plane by tearing their soul out through their eyes. It's something not mentioned in the law, but it's one of the reasons the sloth prefer an avian form, plucking out eyes and devouring souls. Jolly old island, am I right? It's not all bad though. The sloth can only attack a soul or human if they are in despair and their souls are heavy with guilt. The sloth will also attack children, namely infants, a theme you'll find all too often without the creatures of Ireland. St. Patrick may have scared the snakes off of Ireland, but the Fae and the other uglies, he, did, he didn't even touch them. The Fae are from a different dimension. This means that holy relics from ours have no effect upon them. Boggarts, the sloth, kelpies, hobgoblins, they are all immune to silver, wolfsbane and other such traditional ways of confronting monsters. Their psychology is so remotely different than ours and yet it is so similar that it's a headache to study in detail. The fate need to eat, like us, and they prefer meat, like us. To the fate, human flesh is considered a delicacy, almost universally. Once the Fae gets a taste of human flesh, they crave it like a drug addict craves his next fix. However, while the Fae are magical, they can be killed. In fact, they can be struck down by traditional means. However, the Fae have so many weapons at their disposal that using a gun without the proper magical or spiritual wards is suicide. Some Fae have mind control or mind influence. The Kelpie are like this. They appear as an attractive man and lure human women down to the riverside, drag them under, devouring them. The Fae have a particular fascination with the male and female reproductive organs. The Fae, at least from what I have seen, do not have genitalia. I don't know how they breed or if they breed at all. I have watched Fae hunters field dress humans and have a detailed description of their techniques. If you want to read it, ask in the comments. The Fae abduct children out of their cradles. I have no idea what they do with them, but I know what they do with the ones that don't meet their needs. I found their bones scattered around fairy forts all over Ireland. Ireland is a place deeply entrenched in magic, and for hundreds of years it was separate and isolated from other spirits and monsters. As a result, the Irish good folk are among the most horrifying and complex of all entities dwelling, well particularly, on Earth. The only advice I can give you is to avoid the water and to hide and think happy thoughts when ominous clouds of birds fly towards you. Oh, and cover your eyes, that helps too. Stay safe everyone. Don't forget, if you enjoyed that story, 
be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile and drop them a line, or even give them a glowing review. I'm sure they would appreciate it. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description. Don't forget to check out the merch store. The link will be in the description and also in the video thumbnail. If you would like an honourable mention, send in a snapshot of yourself with the purchase and I'll feature it in one of the videos. Have you written a creepypasta story you would like me to narrate? Have you had any cryptic sightings, paranormal or supernatural encounters? Or even had a creepy or terrifying situation you would like to share? You can submit your stories, encounters or any other mail to cryptidsroost at gmail.com If you wish to remain anonymous, that's fine with me. I also have a Facebook group, Twitter, Reddit and Discord. If you would like to support the channel and help make it grow, my PayPal is paypal.me slash cryptidsroost. Again, that will also be below. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not.